Hi everyone, welcome back to Psych Macabre. I'm Shannon, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Every year around Halloween, I like to share a little um, image that I created a few years back, explaining the difference between serial killers, spree killers, mass murderers, and thrill killers. Today I wanted to go a little bit more into detail on that, and really help you guys understand the difference. Oftentimes media will often use the word serial killer or spree killer or mass murder interchangeably, but there really is a difference. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. So serial killers uh, involve serial murder. Uh, this is the unlawful killing of three or more victims by the same offender in separate events. Each event is separated by a cooling off period. There are different different definitions based solely on the number of victims. Uh, in psychology, it's three or more victims. Uh, the FBI, however, I believe they do two or more victims. And generally, these have the same modus operandi and signature. Uh, serial killers do tend to have a signature, which we'll go into a little bit later, the difference between uh, signature and modus operandi. Notable serial killers are Jeffrey Dahmer, Samuel Little, Ed Kemper, BTK, Ted Bundy, Green River Killer, Jack the Ripper, uh, as well as Dexter Morgan from the Dexter TV series and Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street film series. Spree killers involve spree murder. This is two or more murders committed by an offender without a cooling off period. It should be noted that many serial killers and thrill killers devolve into spree killers depending on the circumstances. Ted Bundy is a prime example of this. He started off as a serial killer, but he devolved into a spree killer. Uh, after his capture and escape, he went on a murder spree. Another good example of this would be Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. He did start off as a serial killer very briefly, but he very quickly turned into a spree killer. And then Michael Myers from the Halloween films would be considered a spree killer, not a serial killer as he's often depicted. And this is because Michael Myers doesn't care who he kills. He doesn't have a type. He will kill anyone who gets in his path. A prime example of this would be in the latest Halloween film franchise where he basically goes from house to house and kills everyone he can just because they're there. Mass murders, on the other hand, involves mass murder, obviously. Three or more murders occurring in the same general area over a short period with no distinctive time between the murders. Somebody can be a mass murderer and... I, I guess technically there could be distinctive time between murders depending on the situation, such as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So a group of people, uh, same with Friday the 13th film, group of people are slaughtered in one specific place or area. And then there's a little bit of a break because no one's there. No one's around to get killed. And then somebody shows up and it starts again. Um, so notable mass murderers would be Eric Harris and Dylan Claybold, the Columbine High School shooters. Uh, Charles Whitman, which was the Texas Tower Sniper. John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malvo, also known as the DC Snipers, which uh, we are coming up on the anniversary of the, that... Uh, and they are, they're odd because they are mass murderers, but they are also spree killers. Now, normally when we think of spree killers, we think of knives, bladed objects, strangling, stuff like that. But with them being snipers, they were able to move around a little bit more, go undetected for quite some time. But what makes them a mass murderer is the fact that it all happened within a relatively small area. DC, Washington, DC. So they would be classified as both spree and mass murderers, but generally accepted as mass murderers. Uh, also, Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma City Bomber, uh, and as I said, Jason Voorhees and Pamela Voorhees from the Friday the 13th films. 
Now we get into thrill killers. This involves thrill killing, uh, which can be premeditated or random murder motivated by the sheer excitement of the act. So this is somebody who kills not, they don't have a type, they don't kill in one place, they just kill for the fun of it. Thrill killers generally have feelings of inadequacy and are driven by the need to feel powerful. In most situations, thrill killers make their victims suffer via torture, degrade them, rape, etc. So they themselves can feel powerful and good. Uh, often these killers are younger, generally adolescent in development. So when we think of notable thrill killers, we think of Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb, uh, The Zodiac, Steven Spader and Christopher Gribble, and then the ghost face killers from the Scream movies. Okay, so let's get into modus operandi and signature. The modus operandi is a particular way of doing something, specifically when it comes to crimes such as murder. Uh, so for Jason Voorhees, um, his modus operandi, generally stalking and using a machete, but occasionally using other uh, blunt force objects, such as maybe a hammer or a spear, something like that. But he generally stalks his uh, victims before he kills them. That would be the modus operandi. Uh, the signature, on the other hand, is the criminal's unique patterns or behaviors that are necessary to commit a crime, to, but fulfill a psychological and emotional need. The signature doesn't change over time and the killer has to perform it. So unlike the modus operandi, which can change over time, uh, the signature doesn't change, it stays constant. So this would be the taking of a trophy, um, such as for Dexter Morgan, it would be the uh, blood slides, cutting, generally cutting on the cheek to get the blood for the blood slides. And then Dexter's modus operandi would would be basically how he was caught in the uh, latest series of Dexter, uh, New Blood. He tranquilized them uh, first in order to... I guess his signature would also be the cutting them up. Maybe, actually, that may be more modus operandi. Um, however, I did notice um, whenever Dexter would kill his victims, he always started with... After the cut to the cheek, he would take his blade and go down on their chest, the center of their chest. And that uh, fulfilled the uh, psychological and uh, emotional and somewhat sexual need for him. Um, it, was, it gave him the rush of endorphins. So that act of plunging the blade deep into the chest of his victims could also be considered his signature. Again, just to reiterate, uh, serial killers are, they kill three or more victims, generally have a signature, and the killings are separated by a cooling off period. Notable serial killer Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Uh, spree killers, uh, two or more murders commit, committed by an offender without a cooling off period. Often serial killers and uh, mass murderers will devolve into spree killers. Uh, notable spree killer Michael Myers from the Halloween films. Uh, mass murder. Uh, three or more murders occurring in the same general area over a short period with no distinctive time between the murders. This can generally have a modus operandi uh, for the Unabomber. It was bombs in packages. Same with uh, Timothy McVeigh bombs. Uh, the DC snipers, gunshots, notable mass murder, Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th films. Thrill killers involves three killings, which can be premeditated or random murders motivated by the sheer excitement of the act, often committed by adolescents. And a prime example of the of a thrill killer would be the ghost face killers from Scream. Uh, it should be noted that these descriptions, these titles aren't interchangeable like the media often does. Serial killers, mass murderers, spree killers, and thrill killers are four separate th distinct types of murders. And then we talked about the modus difference between modus operandi and signature. So I hope this helps. Take care everyone.